Yeah, just like David Coverdale once saying, here I go again on my own. Welcome back to another Game Vault video. As always, I'm Captain Beefy. And we're going to do a little follow-up on something we've been talking about here a couple times now. And I got another story for you uh, from another company that we have spoken about before, too. I'm starting to sense some patterns here. I don't know. Well, let's cue up the music and we'll get right to it. All right, first up, report after massive financial disaster, Rocksteady cutting back on support for Suicide Squad, kill the Justice League. Yeah, this isn't a surprise. We know this game is going to be shut down more than likely before the end of the year, unless there's some legal obligation to keep this game running um, based off of whatever. I don't see it continuing, man. This thing is in its death throes. Warner Brothers... They lost $200 million on this thing, and it's just, it's its terrible. It's not getting any better. Uh, the first DLC had the Joker in it, and he was totally homified and silly. The next one has Mrs. Freeze, but it looks more like, um, I don't know, non-binary, gender, non-specific Freeze thing. Looks kind of like a chunky lesbian that's got her boobs taped down. <laughs> I mean, but she's blue. Ah, oh, Warner Bros, Warner Bros, Warner Bros. So we're going to go through this one real quick. I'll link down below, and then we're going to talk about something else. But a new report claims that Rocksteady is cutting back to support for uh, Suicide Squad after it failed to attract an audience and could not sustain the few players that did purchase it. Well, the latest report comes from Bloomberg reporter Jason Schreier in the wake of a report he made claiming to reveal why the game was such a failure. Schreier indicated in his initial report that the game failed due to a constant shifting vision, a culture of rigid perfectionism, and a genre pivot that was ill-suited for the studio. Of note, Schreier did not mention the Sweet Baby Inc. Detected Steam Curator list, which is the second most popular list on Steam with almost 400,000 followers, or the ongoing boycott of AAA games called for by Mark Kern, a.k.a. Grums, in April. I didn't realize that was the second biggest list on Steam. That's utterly insane. Utterly insane. So, yeah, we did talk about this. And Jason Schreier is such a punk sellout, man. You know, he's like, no, it's this, no, it's that. Um, you know, that. now we're only going to talk about what really happened. Sorry, dude. Now, I'm not going to blame it all on Sweet Baby Inc. I will not do that. I'm not that guy that's going to blame everything on it. There was a lot of bad mojo going down with this game. And a lot of what... Schreier mentioned in his report impacted the game. You know, I'm sure um, that genre pivot and a lack of focus or whatever. I mean, I'm sure all of that had something to do with the failure. I remember when the game was first, I think that a trailer was first announced well over a year ago and the game was supposed to come out roughly a year or so ago. And then they put it on the back burner for a bit to uh, rework it because it looked so bad and the uh, what was revealed was just awful everybody's like no nah, this is a piece of crap put it back in the oven it's not ready to eat yet so they did they put it back in the oven but then they sprinkled a whole bunch of rainbow sprinkles on it i guess and yeah, it's absolute garbage now so tim caswell says does the penultimate paragraph infer that the game is no longer in development are they even going to release additional seasons and Schreier states that some bare-bones support definitely not as much as they'd originally planned. Now, that's open for interpretation. I don't see them releasing more seasons. I don't see them wasting the time and the manpower put, to put into this game to please, what, a couple hundred people who are already playing it. It's not like the game is gaining traction and growing steadily. It's not a... It's not improving and getting better. And I honestly don't know. You know, I guess if you... You know, there have been cases in the past where piece of shit games come out and they redeem themselves. Uh, the Final Fantasy XIV, that online game, right? They had to do a, a Realm Reborn or something like that after a while where they just kind of wiped the whole thing out and then redid it because it was so bad. You know, there's an example of that. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077, you know, coming back from a disastrous launch is now a very highly regarded game people love it absolutely love it and for good reason too the game's fantastic you know it was even dare i say decent at launch i was there for it 
PlayStation Pro, um, you know, PlayStation 4 Pro. It wasn't great, but it was decent, and the story was fun, and it was engaging, and it was playable. You know, I didn't have the problems that a lot of people had. Um, maybe because I had the Pro, maybe because my Pro, I had taken out my hard drive and replaced it with an SSD already. Maybe that helped. I don't know what the situation was. But my experience when it came out wasn't horrible, horrible. But the experience of it today, world's better on the 5. Oh my god, I can't even begin to tell you. So anyway, and then there's No Man's Sky, right? No Man's Sky came out in 2016, 8 years ago now. Wow. And... It didn't have all the features it said it was going to have. It looked vastly different than what they had um, put out in the trailers and all that. And it just didn't deliver on the promises that it made. And since then, Sean Murray and Hello Games have taken that game far beyond anything they ever promised in the beginning. And it's fantastic. And people love that game. And, and, and with good reason, you know. But Suicide Squad, I don't see this game having the ability to recover from what it's done. It's just... just it's just shit to bed so bad. Then it rolled around in it, and then, then it rubbed the sheets all over the walls. It's just a mess. I don't think it's coming back. So, not only is Rocksteady allegedly only supplying barebone support for the game, but Schreier also claimed in his original report that the company's employees are now helping to develop a new director's cut version of Hogwarts Legacy. Now, I don't know what that is. I'm kind of curious about that. I enjoyed Hogwarts Legacy. It did get to be a bit of a drag at the end, but... You know, I never completed all the little side missions and all that. There's so much of that there. It suffered from that open world bloat that so many games suffer from. Um, not as bad as an Ubisoft game, but close. You know, very, very close. So, I don't know what the director's cut is going to have in it. Is it going to have more story? More, You know, it's going to be interesting. And is it going to be an upgrade for people that already have Hogwarts Legacy? Are you going to have to buy it like DLC or what? You know? I don't know if it's going to enhance the existing game, give us something new to explore, a new area, a new storyline, new characters. Who knows? But I'm curious about that. Sounds like fun. Um, however, he did note that the company is planning to pitch a new single-player game which would return Rocksteady to his roots. And that's what it needs to do, get back to its roots. Rocksteady did that great. Now, I understand Rocksteady's not the same people that it was back during the Arkham days and all that. I get it. You know, people move on and all that. Um, but, you know, if they don't... Even if it's not the same exact people there, this is a, a studio that has built a reputation on that. And the people involved there are used to working on that. Even, again, if they're not the original ones, they still, they've come on board this game development studio that everything's set up to do that kind of stuff, you know. So, you know, if you own a factory that makes microwaves and, you know, a few years later on you start making toasters instead and fail but the original people that made microwaves aren't there anymore but you decide to make microwaves again well you're still going to have the infrastructure to make microwaves right does that make sense i don't know maybe not but yeah the uh the report from schreier comes in the wake of a rumor from vera dark and you gotta check her out on twitter and uh youtube claiming that warner brothers might shut down rocksteady following the game's poor performance or at least having the 250 uh people that work for that company which would be a shame but you know, here we are once again. This is this is what you get when you promote DEI in gaming. And when you put other things to the forefront of a game rather than a good solid game with great story, great characters, great mechanics and all that. When you want to push other agendas and all that, it just it damages the game as a whole. And, you know, if you're working for a studio that's doing that and then the game fails and then you get laid off, well, poo-poo on you. Maybe you should have stood up to whoever came up with that idea and said, you know what? No, that sounds bad. I don't think that's going to work. You know, more and more people are getting sick and tired of this crap. You'll notice this is one of the quietest Pride Months in the history of Pride Months. We're not seeing all these stupid-ass companies putting out their little rainbow flags and, and you know, just making fools of themselves by selling their Pride-related merchandise for one month out of the year just so they can score points with the LGBT community. I mean, it's it's utterly retarded that they do that every year. It really is. Just, you know, sell a product, man. Just sell a product. It's, it's all you have to do, right? If you want to sell a Snickers bar, make a delicious Snickers bar. Use good chocolate and caramel and nougat and the nuts. Make sure they're fresh and, you know, make... And there you go. It's going to sell itself. It doesn't need to have a rainbow wrapper on it. If people like a Snickers bar, they're going to eat a freaking Snickers bar, you know. 
<sighs> but anyway, yeah, here's uh, at the time this was taken here, they had 233 players on one less than the 24 hour uh, peak, which is horrible for a game that only came out in February. And yeah, it's just bottomed out and it's not going anywhere for a while. So I'll leave the link down here, down below. You can uh, read some more stuff about this, um, mostly reiterating stuff we've talked about before. So nothing new there, but. Here we go, Ubisoft and Evil Empire accused of queering the rogue prince of Persia. Now, queering is something that these queers are doing. They're making characters gay or bi or trans or whatever that weren't that way before. And they're stating that, yeah, he was always that way. I've seen them try to do it in television and movies for characters, too. And it doesn't work, you know, it doesn't work, and it's disingenuous, and it's aggravating. You know, if you want to make a queer character, make a queer character. Make a queer game. I don't care, man. Go ahead and queer out as much as you want, you know. Make it all rainbows and unicorns, and you got to collect, you know, chocolate sprinkles or whatever. Make your game and create a, and create a gay protagonist. Don't queerify an already existing protagonist and say they were always that way. They tried to say Ernie and Bert were gay, you know? Ernie and Bert are a couple Muppets. They were never gay. They were never intended to be gay. They say they're an odd couple. They were gay, you know? Everybody wants to make Superman and Batman gay for each other in the comics industry because the comics industry is the bottom of the DEI barrel right now. Oh, my God. If you see the crap that's going on in the comics industry, it'll make you glad you're not a comics fan. And if you are a comics fan... I'm sorry, man, because they're just taking they're just taking characters that you grew up and loved and all that and just destroying them. But that's something for another day. X user Manga Lawyer shared side by side screenshots from Prince of Persia Warrior Within and the Rogue Prince of Persia and wrote Prince of Persia Warrior Within versus Prince of Persia Tumblr Modern Audience. How did we let this happen, bros? And yeah, look at that. I mean, this is a great looking character, very tough rough brutal fighter and this looks like a guy that works at starbucks and that's going to get upset and need to go into the back for 25 minutes if you use the wrong pronouns with him you know that's what this guy looks like it's absolutely gross uh youtuber melanie mac responded no character is safe from being queered this is gross and it is gross even the color of the skin i mean i get it you know you want to have some kind of art style in the game and all that but this is a human being why is it purple it's just weird the idea that video game developers are queer in their characters is not new an alleged seasoned artist informed sausage roll back in 2020 amid the release of naughty dogs last of us part two that female characters were being designed to look more like men in order to placate adherence to transgender ideology why the artist stated it's not really about the sexual objectification of women women like men come in all shapes and sizes to say that having big busty women is unrealistic is untrue. This insider then added, this is only true for trans people. A trans woman can't naturally grow large breasts, and not all trans people can afford implants. If you see a game where the women are a little less curvy, it's not because the game designers are worried about receiving backlash for sexualizing women, it's because they are worried about offending the trans community. They're worried about offending the trans community. I'm not worried about offending the trans community. In fact, fuck the trans community. If they don't like it, they don't they don't have to play the game. You know, I'm really sick and tired of this group of, of, of mentally disturbed people. This they're sick. They suffer from a freaking mental illness controlling things. How did we let this happen in this country? You know, we, we were weak. We were it all started with the whole being politically correct thing and it just snowballed out of control as more and more things were deemed politically incorrect. And it just kept snowballing and snowballing and snowballing. And here we are today where they're trying to put books in school for elementary school children to teach them how to do it in the butt and other horrible things. And they're, they're promoting drag queen story hour for little kids at libraries and all this horrible, disgusting stuff that doesn't belong there. You want to be freaky, you want to do your own thing, God bless you, have fun with it. Do it in the privacy of your bedroom, you know? Straight people aren't out there for a month of the year making parades, 
with naked dudes grinding up on naked women or very scantily clad men on scantily clad women going down the street in front of kids and all that. And don't come to me with the Hooters argument because that's the biggest bunch of bullshit there ever was. These girls are wearing shorts and they're wearing t-shirts and all that. It's just a restaurant. Yeah, it's a little... You know, it's a little... It's not a your typical restaurant wear, but it is nowhere near what we're talking about with all the sexualization that um, the queer community does. So don't even come to me about that. But... <sighs> So this guy revealed from a design standpoint that's a really challenging problem. I've had many board meetings about how to tackle this. Trans people want realistic representation in our games, but they feel excluded if they are represented as too masculine or too feminine. That's why you will see a lot of designers nerfing the female form, so to speak, so the difference between trans women and cis women is a little less noticeable. And I will... I will put the link for this article down below. You can go ahead and... Uh, Watch this and, you know, read through the rest of this kind of stuff. Let me know what you guys think about this whole thing. I mean, it's, you know, it, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Like, here, here we try to justify things a little bit. Uh, Evil Empire addressed the game's art direction in a video in May. The developer's marketing manager, Matt, detailed, The team was inspired by old Persian miniatures that were often used to illustrate books of Persian tales and are often said to have dreamlike quality. The Rogue Prince of Persia is a tale that someone is recounting at the very beginning of the game. There is a narrator saying exactly this. Let me tell you my story anyway. The story of a reckless young prince wanting to save the kingdom of Persia from the Huns. So it already seemed to be a good fit. Battle scenes, myths, and legends were the main scenarios depicted in these miniatures. So was so that was another tick in the box. On top of that, the painters were often supported financially by the royal family. And this is a game about a prince of Persia... So for us, that sense of nobility seemed to be a natural fit for the game, too, Matt declared. Is that Matt? Oh, God. Man, he looks... <laughs> looks like boiled rice. Uh, he continued, When discovering those Persian miniatures, were, we were all charmed by how bright and colorful they are. The use of clean colors, which you can clearly see in our art direction, in our art direction were captivating. But these pieces of Persian art, while beautiful, don't have much sense of depth and are quite busy. When you're playing a game, even a 2D one, you need to be able to distinguish the foreground, background, and gameplay elements. So to counter this, and also probably because we have mostly French people in the team, we also drew heavy inspiration from Franco-Belgian Mendes Desenis, artists? I don't know what that is, to say that right. Uh, it means graphic novel. Obviously, there isn't one style for all these artists. There's a wide variety of schools and styles, and everyone is unique. Even a single artist will change their style between different projects. But we can say that the sci-fi fantasy work of Mobius, the pseudonym of Jean Girard, was a big inspiration in particular. His work also used vivid colors like Persian miniatures with clean lines that are occasionally broken, giving it a distinct style. Epic backdrops frame the central characters with unusual colors, inspiring your imagination to run riot and lending another dreamlike quality to the image. I don't know, it just looks terrible. Even with those colors and all that, he has no masculine look to him and all that. Even the beard is feminine. You know, it's this little... Ugh, it's gross. But anyway, this was particularly inspiring to us as the game story is a dreamlike myth. The prince has something which takes him back in time every time he dies. He needs to save his country from an invasion that's using dark magic that corrupts those who use it. It's not exactly grounded in reality. Well, I don't know. It's a gross... It's a gross-looking character. I'll tell you that. Definitely gross-looking. And because it's from Ubisoft, you have to question the back, the motive. You know, what is the real motive here? Is this just based off the uh, miniatures, or is there a motive here? Do they want to make it gay, just like they're making Yusuke gay in the new Assassin's Creed, the, uh, the world-famous black gay samurai? It's, you know... Once in a while, if you see something like this, you'd be like, that's kind of weird, but okay, whatever. But it's everywhere now, and it's every day. Every day there's a new story popping up. Every day there's another game that's getting discovered that is just doing this awful shit, pushing this DEI agenda on everybody, and ruining gaming as a whole. When the gaming market crashes, and it will, it'll be nice. It's going to hurt a lot of people for a little while, but 
those who persevere, you know, those who are strong, will come back. All these soft little weirdos, they're not going to survive the crash. They're going to have to go do something else because they're just going to be so broken that they can no longer inject themselves into every single game. And yeah, so I don't know. Maybe they'll go write fan fiction or something. Who knows? But tell me what you think down below about this whole Prince of Persia thing. And um, do you think do you think that um, we're going to see some uh, heads rolling with uh, Rocksteady as well? Kind of curious about that. Don't forget to leave a like on the video down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I will see you guys next time. As always, I'm Captain Beefy with the Game Vault. Thanks for dropping by today. Peace.